name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter. And today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit as we go into your word, the Holy Bible. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. Today, we're going to talk about whether or not Jesus Christ removed the dietary law that was given in the Old Testament books of Leviticus chapter 11 and Deuteronomy chapter 14. So I want to start there. And since I don't usually use Deuteronomy 14, I always read Leviticus 11. I want to start with what the Lord said to his people Israel in Deuteronomy 14. Deuteronomy 14 verse 3 the Lord said, Thou sh shalt not eat any abominable thing. That word abominable means something disgusting, okay? So he says, You will not eat any disgusting thing. Listen, verse 4. These are the beasts or the animals which ye shall eat. These are the animals that you will eat the ox, the sheep, and the goat. Verse 5. The heart, which is a, a stag, a, a male deer. That's what a heart is. And the roebuck, another kind of deer. And the pharaoh deer, and the wild goat, and the pygart, and the wild ox, and the chammy. All of these are in that deer family, okay? Verse 6. And every beast or every animal that parteth or parts the hoof, that has a split in his hoof, and cleaveth the cleft into two claws. So it has a split and, and the two parts go down like claws. And cheweth or chews the cud among the beasts or animals that ye shall eat or that you will eat. Those who chew the cud are animals who eat vegetation. He goes on to say in verse 7, Nevertheless, these ye shall not eat of them, or these you will not eat of the animal kingdom that chew the cud, or them that divide the cloven hoof as the camel and the hare and the coney, which is this little rodent-looking animal. We call them the hyrax. For they chew the cud, but divide not the hoof, Therefore, they are unclean unto you, or unclean to you. So God shows Israel what they can eat and what they couldn't eat. And that's there for us as well. Verse 8, he says, and the swine, which is the pig, because it divides the hoof, or it divides the hoof, yet choose not the cud. Pigs will eat anything. That's why God don't want us eating them. He says, it is unclean to you. The pig is unclean to you. Ye, or you, shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. Now, these are the words of Almighty God now. Verse 9, he says, these ye shall eat of all that are in the waters, or these you will eat of all that are in the waters, all that have fins and scales shall you eat, or shall ye eat. 10. And whatsoever has not fins and scales ye may not eat, it is unclean unto you. So whatever doesn't have fins or scales in the waters, the Lord says it is unclean. We're not supposed to eat them. 
And then he goes into naming all these birds of prey that we're not supposed to eat. And all these birds that he named are birds that eat other animals. And I'm not going to read all of that for the sake of time. You can do that on your own. So the Lord clearly makes a distinction between unclean and clean animals that we can eat. And there's been a big debate among the church of Jesus Christ of what we can and can't eat. Some people believe that Jesus changed this law because of a verse in Mark chapter 7 and in Matthew 15. But what they don't realize is that the Bible was originally written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. And sometimes the translators put their own little extra thing in there when they were translating. And that's why you have to be familiar with what I call the whole of Scripture. And when you see something that just doesn't flow with the rest of the Bible, nine times out of ten, it was something that was added. So when we go to Mark 7, we see the subject that was being discussed was the Pharisees getting on Christ's disciples for not following their tradition. And the Lord was like, no, they shouldn't follow your tradition. They should follow my commandments. Mark 7, verse 1, Then came together to him, to Jesus, the Pharisees and certain of the scribes. The scribes were those who hand copied the law because they didn't have printing press back then. Which came from Jerusalem. Verse 2, And when they saw some of his, of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say with unwashed hands, they found fault. So they saw Christ's disciples just come and start eating. They didn't wash their hands. Verse 3. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they washed their hands off, which means often, eat not holding the tradition of the elders. Verse 4. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. So they had all these traditions that they came up with. Verse 5. Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why walk not your disciples according to the traditions of the elders, but they eat with unwashed hands? 6. He answered and said to them, Jesus said to them, Well has Isaiah, which is Isaiah, prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lip, but their heart is far from me. Uh, seven, how be it, which means but, but in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Verse eight, for laying aside the commandment of God, ye, or you hold the tradition of men as to washing up pots and cups and many other such things like you do. Nine, and he said to them, Full well ye, you, that's you Pharisees and scribes, reject the commandment of God that ye or you may keep your own tradition. So the subject was Christ correcting them that their tradition didn't trump God's law. That's what the subject is here. Now for the sake of time, we're going to jump down to the part where people think Christ made it, uh, made all meats clean, that we can eat all meats. So when we jump down in this chapter, after Christ had left him, verse 17, and when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable, 18, and he said to them, are you so without understanding also? He said, you don't understand what I was telling them? He says, do you not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him? Now, this is what people think he was talking about. Meats. He's talking about eating without unwashed hands. Verse 19. Because it enters not into the heart, but into the belly, and goes out into the draught, purging all meats. Now, that's the three words that people grab onto. And they say, see, see, Christ, he, he, he made all meats clean. Well, I hate to bust your bubble, 
but that does not appear in the original manuscripts. I'm sorry. This was added by the translators. And it's not in harmony with what they were talking about. Why would he say anything a man eats goes through him and it won't defile him when we read in the Old Testament that God made a distinction between clean and unclean meat? And that has not changed. So those three words don't appear in the manuscript. Verse 20, and he said, that which comes out of a man, that defiles the man. 21, for from within, out of the heart of men, perceive evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders. That was 21, 22, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. And 23, all these things come from within and defile the man. So the subject was the Pharisees trying to get Christ's disciples to honor their tradition. It wasn't about meats at all. It was about eating with unwashed hands. But we're going to look at some other scripture to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that Christ didn't change the dietary law. He did not make all meats clean. Okay, the first couple of verses I want to look at to prove that Christ never changed the dietary laws that he gave to Israel and which we are to follow today is in Matthew chapter 5, starting in verse 17. Jesus said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. 18. For verily, which means truly. For truly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. A jot and a tittle is the smallest Hebrew letter with its punctuation mark. So he said, until heaven and earth pass, not a single small letter in its punctuation mark will pass from the law till all of it has been fulfilled. And all of it has not been fulfilled yet because Christ has not come back and set up his kingdom on this earth. So you got to be familiar with the whole of scripture. If you find some phrase or some verse in here that doesn't make sense to you, a lot of times it wasn't properly translated or it was added. Anyway, he says in verse 19, listen, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now you'll have some people try to argue that he was only referring to the Ten Commandments. But I beg to differ, because when you are familiar with all the scripture, everything has to fit together like the pieces of a puzzle. And if they don't, then that means you're missing something. You're not understanding. Um, I felt led by the Holy Spirit to do this video, because <clears throat> a beautiful friend of mine, Sister Jackie, she saw that verse in Mark 7. And like a lot of people, believe that it was a part of the original manuscripts, thinking that Christ changed the dietary laws. No, he did not, because you just saw in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 to 19, that he says, until all has been fulfilled, nothing, not even the smallest letter in the in the, a punctuation mark from the law would pass. Now, if that doesn't do it for you, I think this should. I pointed this out in my other video, but maybe my sister, it just went over her head. So I'm going to take my time with it this time. This is how we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Christ did not change the dietary laws. He did not make all meats clean. We cannot eat everything. We're supposed to eat what he says is clean that's found in Deuteronomy 14 and Leviticus chapter 11. Here's a prophecy of what God is going to do to people who eat swine, pig, when he comes back. 
This is how you know you can't eat pig now. Because if you could, then God would not be coming back with a vengeance upon people who eat swine. And other sins too. So you're not just going to get judged for eating swine, but whatever sin you're doing, if you don't repent, when, you, when he comes, you're in the world of trouble. Now when we go to Isaiah chapter 66, this makes it crystal clear if you're paying attention. Verse 15, it says, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. This is a future event when he comes back to judge the earth. Now, this is the scripture I use in my video, What Can Christians Eat? Eat. So it must have went over my sister Jackie's head. But I want you to make sure you get it this time. This has not happened yet, okay? So he's going to come back with fire and chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger and his rebuke with flames of fire. Verse 16, for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain. That means those he's going to kill of the Lord shall be many. This is a future event. It has not happened yet. Now look why he's going to do it. Verse 17. They that sanctify themselves, these self-righteous people, and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh. You see that? And the abomination. That's all unclean animals and things. And the mouse. That's something else you're not supposed to eat shall be consumed together, says the Lord. So this prophecy alone proves that God did not make all meats clean. Because if he did, he would not be coming back and judging people who are eating unclean meats so severely. I pointed this out in the last Bible study, and I guess it went over your head, but I want to make sure you get it this time. You have to really pay attention when you're studying our Father's Word because people grab a verse and they'll run with it. Say, say the Bible says he claimed our meats. I'm going to give you another example. Like in Acts chapter 10, when the Lord got in touch with Peter to send him to preach the gospel to Cornelius, who was a Gentile. Let's go there. Acts 10, let's start at verse 9. On the morrow, or it means the day after, as they went on their journey and drew nigh or near unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. So Peter went up, have a little long time with the Lord and pray. 10. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. So he was up there praying, he got hungry, and he wanted something to eat. They were down to getting the food ready, but the Lord had him fall into a trance, because God's about to do something. Watch this, 11. When he fell into a trance, it says, and saw heaven opened, and a certain vessel descending upon him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. That's 11, 12. Wherein, or on which, were all manner of four-foot beasts, animals, four-footed animals of the earth and wild beasts, wild animals, and creeping things and fowls, birds of the air. So all kinds of animals were on this big sheet that came down in front of him in this vision. 13. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. So a voice said, Peter, you're hungry? Get up and kill these animals and, 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 and cook them up and eat them. 14. But Peter said, not so, Lord. Listen. For I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. So these weren't the type of animals that you could eat. They weren't clean animals. They were all unclean. And Peter said, no, Lord, I can't eat this. 15. Listen. And the voice spoke to him again the second time, what God has cleansed, that call uh, not thou common. Or what God has cleansed, don't you call common. So people stop right there and say, say, right there, God made all animals clean. That's it. 
Uh -uh. You got to keep reading. You have to pay attention to the whole subject in order to get the right understanding. Now that's what the voice said to him. 16 says this was done thrice. It was done three times and the vessel was received up again into heaven. 17. Listen. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius made an inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. So Peter looked like, is God telling me I can eat pigs and lobster and shrimp and catfish and mice and monkeys and cockroaches and all this unclean stuff that he told my people Israel and told the world we couldn't eat. Is he saying I cleanse all that now? Is that really what he's saying? So he was wondering. Now while he was wondering, those men that Cornelius sent came looking for him, 18, and called and asked whether Simon, which is his real name, Shimon in the Hebrew, which was surnamed Peter. Peter is a nickname the Lord gave him. Were lodged there. So they were looking for him at that very moment. And then the rest of the story tells uh, how the Holy Spirit told Peter that these were the men that God sent to him and to go with them. So he went to Cornelius' house and preached the gospel to Cornelius and them. They got saved. Now I want you to read all of that because I'm not going to do it for you. But I'm going to take you straight to verse 28 in Acts 10 to let you know that that vision that he saw of all those unclean animals wasn't trying to teach him or us that we can eat anything we want to eat now. Acts 10 verse 28. Peter was talking to them about what happened. He told them about the vision. And then he said in verse 28, And he said to them, you know how it is unlawful for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come to another of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So that vision had nothing to do with God cleansing all meats. That vision was showing Peter not to refer to to a Gentile, a non-Jew, as common or unclean. Because that's exactly what the Bible says. So that should be clear in your mind now. The Bible does not teach that God changed the dietary law. No, he did not. A pig is a filthy, disgusting animal. And if you do some research... And you got the internet right at your finger today, the, the information superhighway. And read up on the effects of bacon and ham and, and pork chops and all, you know, everything that comes from a pig. What it does to your body health-wise. And then you can do the same thing with all these other things and you'll see that they're unhealthy for you. They're not good for you. That's why God made a distinction between the clean and the unclean. And if you can eat that mess if you want to, you're going to mess your health up. And let's say you're blessed not to mess your health up, because sometimes God extends grace. If you're eating that stuff to the day you die, or when Jesus comes back, you saw what he says he's going to do to you in Isaiah chapter 66. You're going to be judged, and you're going to go to hell. So I'm hoping and praying that this little Bible study helps somebody out there. I got a Bible study for those of you who haven't seen it titled, What Can Christians Eat? You can get some more information out of that one because I deal with Leviticus 11 there. And I have a Bible study titled, Did Christ Do Away with the Biblical Feast Days? And you can get a lot of good information out of that. So you got to study to show yourself approved unto God a work man and I always add woman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Because there are some things that people wrestle with in the scripture to their own destruction. And it is vital that you get the right understanding when you're studying our Father's word. 
And that's why you have to be familiar with the whole of Scripture. You have to understand what was added and what wasn't added. And that's very easily done today with a good study Bible. They usually point out what was added in the Scripture, what wasn't in the original manuscripts. And if you had a good study Bible, you would see that purging all meats was not in the original manuscripts. Okay, let's say you don't want to buy a study Bible. A lot of times you can go on the internet, the information superhighway, and you can still get the information that you need. Because my sister, when she left a comment uh, putting that scripture from Mark 7 in there, I made up in my mind to do a video and deal with it, but I want to give her an answer right away. So I went on the internet and I did a little research and I found a Bible study that shows that that purging all meats was added. It was not in the original manuscripts and it explained clearly that God did not change the dietary law. So I sent that to Jackie, but I felt like I wanted to do this video to help somebody else. So I'm hoping and praying that you saw today that the Lord did not change the dietary law. We are still supposed to go by Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you, and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. I encourage you to go to paypal.com and set up a free PayPal account. And then you can also download the PayPal app. It's free. And if you choose to do it that way, then you would go use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. And if you choose to bless me using cash app, my uh, code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number which is 630-441-4563. And then I have videos that I put on Patreon. Some people prefer to give their money through Patreon. So if you're going to do it that way, you would go to patreon.com slash Barton underscore Porter. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly and this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. We all need prayer. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. Be reasonable about the times you call. Just don't call me late at night. <laughs> and if you don't have a phone, you can email me your Bible questions or prayer requests or whatever you want to send me. You know, if you just want to share a testimony or share some experience, send it to BartonAaronPorter at gmail.com. Now, these last few things are of the utmost importance, saints. I need your support. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're being blessed through this ministry, take the time to hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. I release Bible study videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. It will let you know a new video is available. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. 
If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. Very important. These are non-financial ways you can help this ministry. And I need your support, saints. So please do that. And last but not least, it just came to my mind. If you really were blessed by a Bible study video, take the time to put something in the comment section. It encourages me to know that my preaching and teaching isn't in vain. And God can use that to encourage somebody else to actually watch the video and see what the Bible has to say about a particular thing. So take the time to put something in the comment section. Now, in closing, these shirts that you see me wear all the time are my own designs. I have an online t-shirt store. And I just recently purchased the domain name. It's godware.store. So please go to godware.store. Check out the t-shirts, the hoodies, the women tees, the cups. If you see something you like, buy it because you're getting something that you can use to share the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere you go. And you're also blessing this ministry as well. So, until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye. I want to tell you guys about my new t-shirt, my Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, which says, Man shall not live by bread alone, and on the back, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Now, this is just one of many of my own custom-made t-shirts, and they can be used as the perfect tool to share the gospel of Jesus Christ without you ever opening your mouth. And they are now available at my online t-shirt store at godwear.store. And all my t-shirts come in hoodies, women t-shirts, and coffee mugs. So I encourage you to go to my online t-shirt store and get yourself some godwear today.